Okay, uh, so uh, like it was already said, uh, we made a similar analysis as uh, Peter and Say did uh, for the Baltic states. Uh, we did it in uh, for Weisgrad uh, for countries uh, and uh, integrated it into presentation where we compared the ba Baltic states uh, with uh, V4 uh, ca ca countries. If you can just change the slide. Mm -hmm. So a little bit that, uh, about the Visa Europa. Uh, so uh, we are in the group uh, regarding the climate and energy policy, but actually Visa Europa, and of course it's a big, big part of our work because this is such an issue right now. Uh, but uh, we are also uh, focusing on socioeconomic uh, impacts on foreign policy, on uh, labor market, and we operate uh, nationally and uh, on the European level. So going to, to, to the analysis, uh, we wanted to, uh, we ask ourselves if uh, we and Baltic states face uh, similar uh, challenges because obviously we have uh, differences as well. So like the, the main difference is that uh, especially Polish economy is uh, uh, in terms of the size, it's way bigger than, than all of the other ca ca countries. And, uh, but also other uh, V4 ca countries are also a little bit bigger uh, in these terms uh, than the Baltic state, states. And uh, uh, in general, the share of energy and uh, supply and particularly industry uh, is higher in V4 countries than in Baltic states. Uh, in me, it means that uh, we are more industrialized uh, countries that uh, probably than Baltic states, uh, and uh, we are also more dependent on solid fossil fuels. Obviously, the entire re region is dependent on uh, fossil fuels, but the solid fossil fuels, especially in Poland, uh, are the big part of the of the energy mix. Uh, but we have also some uh, similarities. Uh, first one is that uh, our GDP per capita uh, is more or less uh, similar uh, and it's uh, under EU average. So obviously in terms of energy uh, transition and uh, decarbonization, we have uh, problems and uh, issues to cover in terms of the high risk uh, of energy poverty. Uh, and uh, we also have a dependency on energy imports. Im imports. It's uh, the case for the B B3 uh, and uh, V4 countries. And uh, uh, we have also the we had um, uh, very big de de dependence on the Russian uh, fossil fuels. Um, but uh, yeah, w when we compare our ca ca countries, we can share good practices uh, how to reduce not only this uh, dependency but how to tra transform our uh, economies uh, e economies uh, sorry uh, yeah and these uh, these areas for uh, are for sure the the good uh, starters for uh, inter regional cooperation not only like within v4 and baltic states but but also in the in the bigger uh, region the second part of the presentation will come yeah. in, will take okay. over. Okay, uh, hello again. Thank you, uh, Christoph, for this introductory part and the senior high level initial, initial comments. And now to the details of, of our comparison between the long term strategies of Baltic states and Visegrad four group countries. Uh, yet yeah, they are quite similar in terms of uh, complying with framework outlined in the governance regulation when it comes to the structure of this document. Uh, and all the documents across both regions are quite up to date. Of course, they do not include the latest developments in the energy policy uh, which uh, resulted from the Russian invasion of Ukraine. But, uh, and uh, except for the Lithuanian long-term strategy, uh, the documents do not reflect uh, even the uh, even even the fit for 55 EU package, but in general, they are quite uh, quite uh, actual in terms of in terms of climate policy. But the thing which struck us the most when comparing 
these two, these two sets of documents was different level of ambitions. Uh, because Baltic states are, in general, collectively much more ambitious in setting climate targets. And by climate targets, I mean in particular greenhouse, em greenhouse gas emission reduction and the share of renewable energy sources in the energy system as a whole, because energy efficiency improvement was, in general, neglected by all the countries, even in the Baltic states, even, e e even by the Baltic states and, uh, and by the Visegrad, Visegrad group. Uh, and this high level of ambition, which is, uh, which is characteristic to, to Baltic states, is because of different starting point. Uh, as for now, Baltic states, the penetration of their energy systems by renewable energy is much more higher than in the case of our, our region, uh, Visegrad, Visegrad group. And uh, this is an obstacle we, we, must, uh, we must overcome by maybe leapfrogging, leapfrogging this, uh, this gap in developing the strategies within, within our region. Uh, but another, another deficiency, which is common both for Baltic states and Visegrad, uh, and Visegrad group, is that we lack in interim targets for, for the period between 2030 and 2050. Uh, yes, so the general overarching target for 2050 is set, but we do not develop a pathway how we are going to achieve this target uh, mm, through these 20 years. And this is something that must be amended urgently. Uh, Christoph, could you? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so when it comes to sectoral pathways and, uh, and measures, uh, in general, uh, Visegrad, Visegrad Group performed better in, uh, in addressing uh, this issue as uh, we, we provided uh, historical data on greenhouse gas emission. Uh, in, in all the sectors. Uh, we have made projections of future emissions. Uh, we have outlined policies and measures. Uh, uh, in, contrast to, in contrast to Baltic states, uh, where this historical background is often not provided, and um, where uh, this sector tailored strategy is not even made at all. And this is definitely an example which can be somehow followed by Baltic states when they will be updating their strategies. Uh, they can take example from, from, from our region in, in, this, uh, in this area. Uh, but a common, common challenge we have, to, we have to somehow address, both by Baltic states and Visegrad group countries, is that uh, we do not develop a strategic roadmap like approach with policies which are to be implemented consecutively one after another and which would show how exactly we are going to achieve targets in particular sectors. And another, another uh, general, general remark is that uh, equally Baltic states and V4 countries uh, did not address to a sufficient extent, uh, the land use, land use change, and forestry sector, and agriculture. Uh, yeah, and this final stage of our comparison, uh, the last three areas, financing, economic assessment, and preparation and implementation. Uh, yes, so uh, firstly, financing. This is the area where V4 countries performed much better than, than Baltic states, as uh, uh, we, as a, as a region, as a whole, we provided an exact assessment of investment needs uh, in, order to, in order to move our economy towards carbon neutrality. But of course, it's only the first step. Uh, it's, it's a halfway to achieving this target because, well, we estimated, the, estimated these investments, but actually we did not found, we did not identify sufficient finance sources for, for fulfilling, for, uh, for fulfilling this investment gap which emerged from, from the assessment of, 
uh, of the investment needs. Of course, in the case of Baltic states, even uh, the assessment of investment needs is missing. So even though they can somehow follow the example of V4 countries in developing, uh, in assessing the investment needs, we can jointly, uh, we can jointly develop from scratch a, method a methodology, a strategy to, uh, to, to fundraise, fundraise the transition to carbon neutrality to find final sources. Uh, the area in which Baltic states performed better in, uh, when compared to, to V4 group countries is definitely research and, uh, research and development, as there is a common objective of spending 2% of national GDP on research and development, whereas in Poland, Czechia, Hungary, Slovakia, uh, there is no such a target. And as a result, this, uh, this field is poorly addressed in, in our long-term in our long-term strategies. But uh, the most important part of this comparison is socioeconomic impacts and distributive impacts. Uh, we highlighted these conclusions because as we remarked at the beginning, as Christoph remarked at the beginning of this presentation, these are the fields where given our mm, common economic problems uh, the cooperation would be the most prospective. And unfortunately, in these two fields, we cannot learn from each other because both Baltic states and V4 countries uh, did not refer to, to a sufficient degree to, to, this, to this issue. Uh, Socio-economic impacts are, in general, poorly addressed with uh, maybe some exception of, of Poland or, or Hungary, but distributive impacts are in general the worst, worst scored category across all the long-term strategies in Baltic states, equally in Visegrad group for countries. So this is definitely much room for improvement in, in this area. Uh, mm, another striking conclusion from the comparison uh, is what uh, Peter already said about analytical tools, because all V4 group countries applied some analytical advanced tools to somehow project, to plan uh, how the transition to, to carbon neutrality can be managed until 2050, whereas Baltic states, uh, Baltic states uh, LTSs are missing this element. A uh, very good example is the example of Poland, which used a popular uh, and extensive primes model. Uh, there is also an example of Slovakia and Hungary, which could be followed, because both Slovakia and Hungary uh, not, only, not only applied a mathematical white economy model, but also referred to some external experts who provided an expert insight in some sectors in order to provide some Mm, qual uh, qualitative analysis. Uh, as, it as it was also stressed, uh, I think more during, during the discussion following Peter's presentation, more strict governance frame framework is needed both in V4 countries and B3 states. And here there is a good policy to follow. I mean, uh, the Estonian example, this policy of, of truth. This is definitely a good tracking tool which can be uh, which could be extrapolated uh, across both both the regions. Uh, yeah, uh, and together with this, uh, when updating long-term strategies, more public consultation could be could be involved within the process, and um, civil society could have more more influence on the final shape of, of the document, because as for now, even if this public consultation took place, we are not sure to what extent exactly these public opinions were, were included in the final draft. Okay, so to the conclusions, brief summary. Yeah, as I already said, uh, about, I, as I already said, there are deficiencies deficiencies if in these key areas we, we, uh, we identified as key areas for, for inter-regional cooperation. Yeah, I mean 
socioeconomic impacts, distributive impacts, uh, but also sectoral pathways, sector tailored strategy, which could be especially uh, especially needed in terms of transport because both V V4 countries and B3 states uh, are, ha are highly reliant on oil in this sector and we could learn from each other how to reduce this dependency on oil and petrol and petrol petroleum in transport and how to develop electromobility. As for now it is quite uh, quite difficult to, to share these experiences. Uh, of course, mm, no one could foresee the Russian invasion of Ukraine, but uh, especially given this, this, this latest development, uh, long-term strategies could, should be urgently updated. This is probably, unfor uh, unfortunately, a good occasion which can force our countries to update these documents, not only in view, in view of, of, uh, of course, in view, in view of Russian invasion, but this occasion can be grasped in order to, in general, uh, in general, improve, improve, improve long-term strategies. Of course, uh, these latest, uh, these recent events in the energy market, EU energy market, EU energy policy. Could, could be included, especially in terms of the burning issue of energy security, as it is a common challenge for, for our regions. Yeah, and this uh, updates could be developed in collaboration between, between Baltic states and Visegrad group countries. Uh, we will probably discuss it uh, later, how, how this collaboration, cooperation could be conducted. Uh, Mm, yeah, and f and f at the end we provided a mm, brief, uh, brief summary of good practice which could be shared between, between our states because uh, as we are close to each other we share a common challenge, we can also learn from each other and uh, from the side of Baltic states definitely a strategy for the robust, robust rollout of renewables is something which can be shared with our with, uh, with V4 region. As, uh, as for now, renewables, the penetration of our energy systems with renewables is at a very, very low level compared to, to, the, um, to the Western countries and even to the Baltic states. So definitely, this is something we can learn from, from you as a region, how to, how to develop, how to develop uh, renewables and how to set ambitious targets in, in, the share, uh, in terms of, of the share of renewables in the energy system as a whole. And another good practice to, to be followed is, is this Estonian tree of truth as a good tracking tool. Uh, of course, as it, as it might be obviously concluded from what I have already said, a much more good practice can be shared by Visegrad, uh, first of all, yeah, this model-based approach, uh, sector-tailored strategies, which of course are not at their best in, in the strategies submitted by V4 countries, but uh, there was some effort put in order to design uh, separate strategies for a particular sector, which was not done at all, I have such an impression, in, in the strategies provided by, by Baltic states. Of course, uh, assessment of investment needs and available finance is a practice that can we build on in the updates of, of the long-term strategies. Hungary uh, delivered a cost-benefit analysis when, when, uh, mm, when assessing the socio-economic impacts in the long-term strategy. It was a very extensive tool which included issues that, um, that are sometimes, sometimes ignored when we think about climate policy. And I mean, um, for example, car accidents, uh, impact of air pollution on health, etc. These all elements could be, could be included in such an analysis, analysis of avoided costs and additional benefits from, from the transition to carbon neutrality. I already said uh, about providing historical data on greenhouse gas emissions. Yeah, and uh, definitely uh, the documents submitted by uh, Poland, Slovakia, Czechia and Hungary um, had a very good visual side. Uh, data has been presented in a very comprehensive way 
with many charts, drawings, etc. And which this was an element which was definitely missing in the strategies of the Baltic states. Yeah. So this is what we can do together. Thank you very much. In the name of Visa Europa, thank you, Krzysztof. Thank you. And we are waiting your questions.